everyone, Jedi here. I've uh, been out in the woods for a couple of hours and uh, it's time for a brew. So uh, I've got the Tatonka meth burner on the go and the uh, in the hobo stove, give it a bit of a windshield. And uh, while the kettle's, a little single man kettle is on to boil, I thought I would do a video um, as a response to a tag that I got from Rob Andersborg. Cheers, Rob. I hope you're uh, hope you're doing well, my friend. And it was on a on a, an interesting subject and one that is not really at the forefront of many people's minds in in the United Kingdom. The tag was basically to give my thoughts on prepping. Now, when I started this channel up. Uh, a year ago, I, I did a video, um, if I remember right, it was called something like The Hooded Mask Rant. And it was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek, mess around, laugh at myself kind of attempt to put forward my frustrations with regards to prepping in the UK. Um, I was approached via email not long ago by a, a television company, the same as a couple of other YouTubers have been, around um, prepping and what we do and how we do it. As anybody's watched my channel, I wouldn't call myself a hardcore prepper in the accepted manner. And the TV company um, have not been back to me since the telephone interview that we did. And I'm not overly surprised at that. And in a way, it kind of serves to reinforce my thoughts on prepping in the UK and, and our attitude towards it. And I'll explain what I mean by that. When we were talking, they kept on asking me about stashes of food and stashes of water and, you know, month-long preps for this and basically stopping just short of asking me if I had a concrete lead-lined bunker dug in the woods somewhere. And I tried to explain, for my mind, I mean, YouTube's a funny thing in that a lot of people go outdoors, but the thing that everybody seems to be interested in, I'm not generalising here, but a lot of people seem to be interested in the kit side of things. Videos on knives, videos on cooking kits, videos on tents, hammocks, tarps, all those sorts of things, which is great. You know, I'm interested in them as well. But really the essence is about the knowledge, the skills, the comfort level that we've got in, a, in, a, in an environment that is alien to an awful lot of people these days. And really my, my idea of prepping and my frustrations around prepping, certainly for UK based people, I know there's a lot of examples of people um, that are really serious about this and I won't name them all because there's just, just too many to mention but some really good people out there that have got I think the attitude right and that's that's the key thing for me in prepping it's not for me about having 58 bottles of 2 litre bottles of water stashed in my uh, in my shed it's not about having um dry packaged foods on rotation in my larder. I do have a lot of that stuff um, and I always make sure that my, my larder, my pantry is well stocked and I reckon I could probably get by for about a month with what I've got in my pantry just if that's all I was eating. But. Prepping for me is about a mindset. It's about taking responsibility for your life. It's about taking responsibility for your family's well-being. It's not just sitting back and going, in an emergency, the government's going to look after me. I'll have people knocking on my door asking me if I'm all right. You know, do I need anything? Do I need any more cushions or blankets? You know. 
the attitude is about get off your backside, arm yourself with a certain degree of knowledge. I'm not Ray Mears, I'm not Les Stroud, I don't claim to be. But what I am desperately trying to do um, throughout my life is, is arm myself with a degree of knowledge such that if I absolutely had to, I could look after my wife and my dog. We haven't got any children and um, man, I tell you what, if I had children then the job would be 20 times more difficult than it is for me now. Um, really I've got the two of us to look forward to and, and the dog as well, but if I had children Man, that would make it 20 times more difficult. The frustrating thing for me is, I'd sit and talk to people and say to them, how would you cope if the electricity went down? I wouldn't have to worry about it. What do you mean you wouldn't have to worry about it? Well, my house is warm. Well, how do you think it gets that way? The central heating. Well, what do you think runs the central heating, for God's sake? What, what are you going to do about water? Well, it comes from the tap. There's plenty of it. It'll still keep pumping through the tap. What do you think pumps it through the system if the electricity could, goes down? Um, well, there's loads of it. There's loads of it in the pipes and it'll, it'll last for a long time. Where, what other sources could you get the water from? Um, I don't know, I'd go and get it from a stream or a river. And then what would you do with it? Well, I'd drink it. Would you? Right, okay. That's one less... Uh, one less person to worry about after after a couple of days when you die from some kind of streptococcal disease. The point is, there's a lot of skills knowledge that's that's missing from people in the UK. We are so far behind our American brothers and sisters. Um, and in one sense, that gives me an advantage because I guess I'm going to be the one that's sitting around happy as Larry. Um, but it goes deeper than that. It goes deeper than that. It, I mean, what about our reliance on things that, um, drugs like nicotine, like alcohol, like some of the illegal drugs that are out there that people are, are reliant on? Um, I like a cup of tea, same as the rest of us. Um, I don't smoke. Oh, lovely jubbly. Um, I haven't got as much of a reliance on the crap that they put in our food these days um, that makes us crave rubbish junk food. I like a coffee, but I know for well I could go without it for months on end. Um, I don't have this reliance on nicotine. I do enjoy a cigar. I do enjoy a pipe, but I haven't got the reliance on nicotine. It's not there clouding my judgement. I haven't got a reliance on high fat, high salt, you know, e-numbered content foods that so many people have got. And that's what it's all about prepping for me. Um, it's not about having a lead-lined bunker. It's not about having stashes of food and water. Yes, that's a benefit, but that stuff is no good if you don't know how to use it, if you, you don't know how to supplement your your rations and that's what you're looking to do you've got this food you've got this dry um, freeze-dried food whatever you've done um, but what it runs out you're in an indefinite period of uncertainty so on and so forth what you're gonna do just have the same amount of meals three times a day I don't think so I wouldn't be doing it like that I tell you I'd be looking to ration um, so really prepping for me is the mindset. I know I've got lots of skills gaps. I'm, I'm building upon them. Most of my experience has been out in the British woodland um, and the British countryside. You know, I, I, I could be fairly comfortable here. I've spoken about it in uh, one of my other videos about having an acceptance of a wide open space that you're sharing with the elements, with mother nature and um, other animals, you know. It's a pretty scary place to be sometimes, if you're not used to it. Me, I'd rather be here than anyone else, I tell you. Um, than anywhere else, should I say. But, you know, it's a state of mind, guys. Prepping is a state of mind. Do what you need to do. Increase your skills, increase your knowledge. Get out there, practice that knowledge. 
and then supplement it with things. That's my take on it. That's just my take on it. I know there's going to be loads of people out there that slam me for you know not having one of these freeze dry machines. I'm bothered about that. I can do it in the woods. You know, I can smoke meat in the woods. I can use a lot of the cooking utensils I've got to uh, to slowly slowly dry stuff out for keeping and preserving for a while. I think I've got a good knowledge on wild edibles, particularly mushrooms, fruits, nuts, berries, um, and a lot of wild greens. It's not going to keep me going forever, but I tell you what, it's going to add an awful lot more enjoyment to that packet freeze-dried rice that everybody else is munching on with nothing else. Um, and those little things can make my time a heck of a lot more enjoyable. Call it enjoyable. But uh, rant over. I think my tea is just about ready. Yeah. So uh, there you go, Rob, and uh, everybody else that takes the time to go through this one. Sorry if it went on a little bit, but you know I'm quite passionate about my uh, my views on it, my views and opinions. Um, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Take care.